Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thanks for joining me today for floss tube number 91, I believe. I haven't been back in two weeks because I just had a lot going on. I have a lot to talk about. I have some life updates on the crafting end. I had an art festival last weekend, which is why I didn't film last weekend. And I have seven fully finished objects. Seven, seven fully finished objects. I can only show you six because one of them is secret stitching, but I have taken a video and I will show you that once it is received by its recipient, which should be in the next month or so. And I have happy mail, like amazing happy mail. And I have some progress on all of my two remaining. Well, that's not true because I have other whips. I have progress on two works in progress. I have some really fun plans I want to talk about. And then I have a little bit of stitchy, weavy, crafty haul I want to show you. I went to Michael's and got some clearance stuff, which I'm not going to show you, clearance jewelry stuff. And then that, but then we have this, we have this store called Dirt Cheap. I don't know if it's anywhere else. I've never seen it until I moved here to Mississippi, but basically they buy like, extra lots of things. I'm sure they just like buy a shipping container that like Target doesn't want anymore, right? And so you never know what you're going to find when you go, but you can usually find it pretty cheap. And so I got some um for my kind of crafting and spoolery stuff. I got some cool stuff, so I'm looking forward to showing you that. I don't know if I said I had happy mail, but either way, I have happy mail as well and I'm excited. And I have exciting plans. I don't remember what I've said to you now. I'm all discombobulated. But before we get to any of that, we'll start, we'll kind of start fresh. Before I get to any of that, I want to welcome my new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me on my crafty and artistic adventures. And welcome back to everyone who's been hanging out with me for however long you've been with me. It has been fantastic to get to know you in the comments here on YouTube, which I am terrible about. I've been so busy. I have not been responding to comments. I have been reading them all, but I have not been responding. So I'm going to try and do that today and tomorrow. But it's been great to get to know you in those comments and also on Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you can find me in two places. The first place is, um, put them right here. The first place is like my normal stitchy life, weaving, crafting, walking, whatever I'm doing. That's kind of my main Instagram is Dr. Underscore Christy. And then my other one is my homage to vintage wooden spools, which I love. I love vintage wooden spools. And I have a whole kind of business that has grown up around vintage wooden spools and vintage sewing paraphernalia. And that is at The Spoolery. This is a channel about embroidery and cross stitch and history and vintage sewing and the history of all of those things. So if any of that is interesting to you and you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe and stick around. I think I want to start with my happy mail and then we'll do fully finished objects and we'll kind of go in the normal order of floss tubes. So happy mail. I won a giveaway from Elanka, Stitch Elanka, who is in Hamburg, Germany. And I won her thousand subscriber giveaway. And the prize that I was entering for, I will link her down below. The prize I was entering for was this hand dyed Ada by Esther, the Danish stitcher, whom I will also link down below. She does not sell her goods. She does not sell her dyes, but she does give them away. And I won this as a prize, which is really exciting. And Ilanka apparently does not believe that fabric can travel alone. So she sent me a whole goodie bag. So I just want to show you the fun thing she sent me. Um, she sent me this really sweet card with a dachshund, with a, a dachshund on it. We call them dachshunds. And along the same lines, there is, sorry about the crinkling, but it's all in a bag so I can keep it together. A magnet. How cute is he? She made me an ort catcher. Um, and ort, O-R-T, is the little pieces, like when you cut off your string, like little pieces. And fun fact, um, there are some sort of questions about where the term ort comes from. Um, and I know that some 
people say that it is like ORT, like means something. I don't remember what people say it means, but ORT is actually um, from a an old English word meaning crumbs. So like crumbs of food. And I'll put the old English word here. I think I've talked about that before, but an ORT is the leftovers are your crumbs, are your thread crumbs. And this will be perfect for my travel stitching because I do actually keep all my orts. And at the end of the year, I put them in a Christmas ornament. And so I put the date of the year on that. And so I save up all my orts for the year and put them in that ornament. And then I have ornaments for my tree that are sort of stitchy. So this will be perfect for travel stitching. Now, she was originally just sending me floss drops until I won the, won the contest, won her giveaway. So she sent me some... Um, there we go. This looks really blurry. Hold on. I'm going to clean you. I don't know if that's better or not, but I cleaned you up a bit. So maybe you can see better. Anyway, she sent me, um, some floss drops and this is what I keep my floss on for, uh, for my, well, for all of my projects, but in particular, I'm looking for floss drops for my heaven and earth design, which I'll show you later. And this little mosquito is the uh, mascot for her local stitching group. So I love, I love the little sewing mosquito. And then she also sent me some bobbins and these are really cool. They are like little mini floss cards for if I have kind of a smaller project. So I really like those. So thank you. These will go to good use. And Esther, Danish Stitcher, who dyed the fabric, has also started dyeing silk floss. And so I have some, she sent me some pieces of silk floss as well, which I will use for something fun. How great are those? Uh, they don't have names on them, so I don't know what their names are, but they're really pretty. And who doesn't love a good splotchy silk? I mean, for real. She gave me a sticker. And two needle minders. One of them is a needle minder and one of them I will make into a needle minder. We have um, Hamburg, which is a needle minder. And then also this was given to her by one of her stitchy friends in Germany. But it is the lady and the unicorn. And this one is, I don't know which one this is. Oh, this one is sight. Cause there's a little, there's a little mirror. This is sight. So I'm going to put a magnet on the back, like super easy, easy peasy, put a magnet on the back and, and then I can use it as a stitch marker on my lady and the unicorn piece. And then she sent me some patterns, which I'm not going to show because they're just the pattern, but they're traditional German designs. And one of her stitchy friends uh, designed this. And so she sent me that as well. So that is a pretty amazing, <laughs> pretty amazing gift package. So thank you, Ilanka, so much. I will use all of this and love, I love all of this. And I appreciate you that you were thinking about me and congratulations on your now over a thousand subscribers and well-deserved. So thank you so much. I'm putting it all back because I don't want to lose any of it. Okay, I'm back. That's all put away. So let's talk fully finished objects. Now I, like I said, I have posted these six fully finished objects on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen them. I posted them this morning, but I have fully finished my sleuths, all of my sleuths are now fully finished. So these are just a series that I decided to do just for myself. They are my favorite TV and literary sleuths and the literary sleuths are my favorite TV versions of them. So this is um, Agatha Christie's Poirot, uh, the David Suchet version. I have Miss Phryne Fisher from Miss Fisher's Mysteries. I have uh, Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes, the Jeremy Brett version. And I kept saying I was going to 
fill this in and make that satin stitch. I never did. And I didn't realize it until after I fully finished it. And by that point, I couldn't be bothered. Although I literally still could because it's like fairly open in the back. And I will show you how I finish these if you're interested. I have Jessica Fletcher from Murder, She Wrote. Columbo from Columbo. And Miss Jane Marple from Agatha Christie's Miss Marple. And this is the Joan Hickson version. So these are all stitched on a cotton linen blend that I got from Fat Quarter Shop called Essex Linen. I really like stitching on Essex Linen. And normally I would probably do two layers because it is does have a slight open weave, but I do really enjoy stitching on this. I transferred the designs using my silhouette and the images. So I created the images as SVG images. I have a program that I do that on. It's called Inkscape. It is open source and free. Inkscape, I'll put that here. And that is, I take pictures that I like um, and kind of combine them in ways that make me happy. So for example, this picture is just a single image, but Columbo is actually two images put together. So it's like the hand and cigar and the head are two different images. And same with Jessica Fletcher, the body and head is one image and like the glasses are another image. So I, this one's the same. So I, I basically pick parts of these characters that I think are noteworthy and make it clear to me who they are. And I stitch those and it's a very limited color palette. I wanted them to all go together. You'll see it's like a beige, a gray, a black, a burgundy, a red, and a white. And those are the only colors that I'm using. I don't have the, I don't have my project bag with me. Ooh, it's over there. Hold on one second. I'll grab it and then I can show you what colors I use. Okay. Here's the bag I've been storing them in. And here are my colors. You're a little further away now, which is inconvenient since I'm showing you things, but that's okay. That's okay. So I just keep them on my ring and I have cottons and silks. So the red and the burgundy are both be stitch me silks. Uh, the red, the bright red is red barn and the burgundy is sangria. Now, the interesting thing about the burgundy, which you can kind of see, although it is a little beat up looking, is that it looks like the dye didn't permeate all the way through. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know if you can see that they're like white pieces. Yeah, you can totally see. They're like white flecks because when I unravel the strands, they just didn't permeate all the way through. So that has made it kind of interesting let me show you where I used that. I used the burgundy in a couple places. Oh, I actually used the burgundy quite a lot. So I used the burgundy on four of them. I used it for Jessica Fletcher's um, sweater and in her glasses. I did a whipped stitch for her glasses. So I used it there. I used it in Friny Fisher's headpiece for the jewels. I used it in Poirot's tie. And I did a lattice stitch for the tie. And then I also used it, I don't know if you can even see, I used it in Miss Marple's brooch, right in the middle of the brooch. It's hard to see, but it is there. I should have probably used the red for the brooch, but I don't feel like Miss Marple is a red person. And then for the red, I used it in the rose in Columbo, in, not Columbo, in Poirot's rose, which is a woven wheel stitch. I used it a lot in Franny Fisher for her nails and her lips. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I did have to come up with a new color for Jessica Fletcher because I have, I did sort of an outline of her face, which I didn't want to be the same color as her hair. And so I used two, I had to pick a new, find a new color for her hair. But then I used that color 
for Columbo's hand. And so it worked out really well. So let's talk about the cotton colors. The cotton, and this is all just from Stash. I did not buy new colors with it. I just kind of found what I had. The black is rustic black, which is a black to gray variegated. The white is tusk, which is a white, oops, white to very light beige variegated. The gold is golden ale, which is a beautiful gold color. The gray is, oh, those are all color and cotton. And then smoke is the gray, which is dying for cross stitch. Uh, the tan, which is like Columbo's coat, Miss Marple's hat, stuff like that, is peanut color and cotton. I used to be in the color and cotton thread club, so I have a lot of color and cotton. And then the kind of strawberry blonde color that I use for Jessica Fletcher's hair and Columbo's skin is uh, Spring Flowers by The Gentle Arts, which is a coloring, not a coloring, a stitchy box exclusive. Uh, and then I was also for a while in the Be Stitch Me Silk of the Month Club, and so I have a lot of Be Stitch Me silks. So that's the colors. And all I did was just paint some eight inch hoops. You'll notice all my hoops are missing. I'll talk about that in a bit. But I just took some eight inch hoops and painted, the black, painted them black, put some sealant on them, and, and framed them in a hoop. And what I do is I put the, I put like the inner hoop down on the table and then I put a piece of white muslin or in this case, I think I used a white cotton poly blend. Just put it on top and then I put the stitch piece on top of that. And so they are, I have two layers and the stitches are protected. And then I cut the inside layer, like the bottom layer Real, fairly close to the hoop. And I cut this with pinking shear, the, the actual stitched fabric with pinking shears uh, about an inch. I tried to do about an inch, but I did not center these very well when I made them. So it, it's pretty wonky, but it's gonna be against the wall, so it doesn't matter. And then I just do a running stitch and tie a little knot in it and, it, and it's done. I don't, for stuff like this for me, I don't worry about putting extra fabric on the back and I don't worry about that. It's all protected, it's all good, and it all has my little KD signature. So those are my fully finished objects. My Sleuth series is done. I'm so excited. I do think I'm gonna start a new series like this in the, probably in the new year. I have a lot of plans and a lot of things that are coming up that I want to do. So I think I'm going to hang this on my wall. I'll post a picture of it when it's on my wall and I'm really happy it's done. I'm so happy it's done. So those are my fully finished objects. And like I said, I also have a seventh fully finished object, but that is secret stitching. So I can't show you cause you know, it's a secret. Let's talk about works in progress. Works in progress. Oh, and my finished object for the week was secret stitching and also Miss Marple. So let's do works in progress. I'm really pleased with my works in progress this, this past two weeks. I have been working on my temperature drink shelf. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. And I have finished September. Woo woo! So September is done, including the knickknack. And the knickknack is an armadillo. And I had not been stitching the knickknack. So you'll notice there are like no knickknacks, no knickknacks, no knickknacks. And then in August, I decided to stitch that uh, bottle, the decanter, because what I'm finding is that my counting gets off <laughs> when I try and count around those empty spaces. So I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fill it in. But I actually saw an armadillo on my morning walk on the day that I stitched this armadillo. So I'm like, I'm at the armadillo. I saw an armadillo. It feels like it's supposed to happen. Um, and basically what happened was we just had an, we just had the armadillo like wandering down the sidewalk downtown today, uh, that day. It was last week sometime. And 
ba uh, my dog and I, so we kind of do a big circle through downtown and we are at a, you know, a cross, a crosswalk. And so we were crossing and I looked down, I looked sort of towards downtown on that sidewalk in the shade. And there was this little like do, 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 do armadillo kind of like walking away towards downtown. I hope, I mean, I didn't see a dead armadillo the next day, so I'm, I'm assuming he made it wherever he wanted to go. But my dog didn't see it, thank goodness, because my dog freaks out. My dog's adorable when he sees like new animals. Adorable. He is the most vicious, the most vicious, tiny, floofy dog. Small floofy dog. He's not tiny. He's like 20 pounds, but small floofy dog. Anywho, so I'm like, I got to stitch that armadillo. So I st stitched the armadillo. I stitch all, I poured all my drinks, stitch all my glasses. I'm really pleased. And I work on this with my mom on Sundays and it is Sunday and I will work on October. I'll do the October, just do the straight line shelf and that'll be, that'll be good. This is being stitched on a 14 count Navy Ada, just out of a tube in the called for DMC. And um, if you're interested in stitching this, you can find it in my Etsy shop down below. And I have been working on, although not lately because I've had a lot to do, but I have been working on a 2023 temperature bookshelf. I'm struggling with the knickknacks. I got to be honest with you. Struggling with the knickknacks. I thought I had February fixed, but I'm like rethinking it and I'm not super thrilled. I'll have to see. I'll have to see what I come up with. But I am planning on releasing a 2023 bookshelf, temperature bookshelf, temperature library uh, in the next week or two. That's the plan. That's the plan. So that is my one, my one work in progress. And my second work in progress is my hate, my heaven and earth design. This is what it's going to look like. It is the lady and the unicorn. And it is a medieval tapestry. I don't think I'm going to do much editing, so I'm not going to show you where it was before, but I will show you what I worked on because it's pretty obvious, I think, which is surprising in a hate. But that's what it will look like, the whole thing. And, oh, and it's upside down. And here is where I am. So I have been working in this area because I wanted to get to this section, which is a tiny monkey. So Marcia, this little monkey <laughs> is being done at your request. I kind of worked my way across. I did some stuff in here and I worked my way across and I've been working on that monkey. And it's, it's just this little guy right here. That's the monkey. Um, and his arms out and he's just kind of like chilling right there. So that is what I've been working on. And this is stitched on a 20 count ivory Ada two over one full cross because I like a good, um, I like a good chunky, I like a good coverage, good thickness. Obviously in the call, called for DMC because it is a, a heaven of design. I grid it every five stitches using a friction pen and I do it in orange because I do have some light spots. And so we've had some problems lately with this friction pen not coming out all the way. So I am glad I've been doing it in the orange. So even if it comes back a little bit, it hopefully won't show too badly under these light stitches. But yeah, I'm, I'm, my goal is five years. Well, now it's like five and a half or six years for this. Cause I'm a little bit behind, but I have hit 13,000 stitches and I'm at, no, I'm sorry. I've hit, I've passed 30,000 stitches and I'm at a little over 13 and a quarter percent done on this. So I'm pretty pleased with my progress on that. I am about a month, maybe a month and a half behind, but not as bad as I feared. <laughs> So that's good. But I have been trying to make some pretty steady progress. Uh, my goal is 125 stitches a day and I either do no stitches or 200 stitches. So I'm hoping that they will, you know, balance each other out and we'll see what happens. So those are my two works in progress. Those are my finishes. That's all like the actual stitching I have to show you. 
but I do have some stitching plans that I want to talk about that I'm really excited about. So first of all, you may have heard if you watch other people's floss tubes that there is a stitch along happening or that is about to, well, we're in the preliminary phases at the moment called Stiach Along by Stiach, which is a cross stitch company who, um, from what I understand, invented the mystery stitch along. So this is a mystery stitch along and they are a snarky mystery. They're a snarky stitching company. So uh, very sweary. If you do not like swear words, I mean, I don't have this, I don't have it yet, but I'm really hoping that there are some swear words. They will, uh, you may not want to watch my stiatch long sections. But um, the first thing that happened is about, I guess on the first, they told us the flosses, the, the materials for the stitch along. So they said a neutral fabric. So I haven't chosen my fabric yet, but what I'll do is I will put a poll up on Instagram. I'll see what kind of fabrics I have. It's supposed to, it's going to be fairly small so I can use kind of my scraps that I have, which is good because I only have scraps other than things I've gotten in boxes. And even though some of those are scraps. So they, they said a neutral fabric and then they gave us the DMC list. Well, I don't feel like buying, I don't feel like buying stuff, right? Like I have enough, enough, I have enough stuff. So I'm trying to stitch from stash. So the color palette was a blue green, a dark blue, a light blue, a gold, and a, a coppery color and a red, uh, like a orange red color. So I decided that I was going to do mine in my, let's see if I can do this, in my Devere yarns silks. I've been say, oops, I dropped it. Got it. I, I realized like I have all these beautiful Devere yarn silks that I got from multiple advent boxes and what, whatnot. And I don't use them because I'm saving them for something special, but everything is special, right? Like, why don't I just enjoy stitching with them? Like it, it's all special. So I am using my silks and I am using light Laurel, which is coming up much bluer for you. It's actually much greener than that. Light Laurel, Indigo, which is looking pretty true. Um, Parrot, also looking pretty true. Desert, that was, um, it's, it's a mustardy. It's basically that color right there, that color. Uh, this is rust. And flame, which is less, well, it's a little pinker than it's showing. So those are my six colors. And I think there are more colors. So the way it works, it's a there are six parts that everyone does. So the six parts everyone does, those are the six colors that are in those six parts. There is a seventh part that they'll offer like multiple endings. It's like a choose your own ending kind of a pattern. And depending on the ending you choose, there may be other colors involved. So you can choose an ending that only uses those six colors, but you can also choose an ending that uses other colors. So I'm looking forward to seeing like what my options are. This is my first Diatch along and I'm super excited. And I'm, so anyway, so we chose our colors and then, and the thing about this stitch along is that there are challenges. So it's a team stitch along. So I'm on a team with uh, Jesse Mislaid Pages is the host with the most. They are the one who is like organizing the team and it's, and the team is happening on their discord server. And I, and Michelle, uh, Benny Stitchy's on the team, Rachel Ray's on the team, a whole bunch of people are on this team. I'm excited. I'm on a team. And so there are te team challenges and there are individual challenges. And I think you earn points. I don't know how it works. Um, my goal is just to be as ridiculous as I can possibly be. 
And to start off my ridiculousness, an individual challenge dropped unexpectedly last week. It was a surprise individual challenge and it was to do a training montage. And I will put a link down below to my Instagram for my training montage if you haven't already seen it. It, it was so much fun to film and, it, and I watched it over and over again and just giggled. Like it was hilarious. I, if I do say so myself, <laughs> if I do say so myself, it was pretty damn funny. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I did that challenge. That was really fun. And then the first part of the pattern drops on the 14th, which I think is Saturday, next Saturday. I think it's next Saturday, next Friday or Saturday. So that'll be really fun. And by then I will have my fabric. So I am keeping that in my Love You More Studios bag, which I got in a Black Needle Society box because I think they're the same company. That And this is what I was keeping my secret stitching in, which is done. And so now I'm keeping my stiash long in it. And I feel like this is wacky enough to, you know, be a good stiash long. So that's one set of plans. Another thing I've been thinking about is Flossmas. Now I have never done Flossmas before. I am a college professor and Flossmas is a daily video during the Christmas Advent season where you're opening an Advent calendar or you are, I don't know, I mean, essentially it's just doing a short video every day and I've never done it before. My mom does it for Vlogmas, for knitting, the knitting community does Vlogmas. We do Flossmas and the stitching community and I've just never had time because as a college professor, that's like finals week, tons of grading, and then like collapsing at the end. Well, this year, my semester ends on the second. Like the like finals week ends on the second. It is the earliest I have ever had a finals week. And it got me thinking that maybe I could do Flossmas this year. I would ask if you all would like to see me every day, but in all honesty, like if you don't want to see me every day, you just don't have to watch the video, right? Like I'm doing it because I'm, it makes me happy. I do have an advent calendar that I got from Forbidden Fiber Co, an advent calendar box. It's the same, um, similar to what I got last year. So I do have something to open every day. And then I was like, I had this idea in my last uh, Black Needle Society box, which I got, in September. It came with this um, jar that just says to be stitched and these cards. Now I don't know how many cards there are. These are to be stitched cards. Um, and I didn't know how I would use this because I don't have a lot of whips. I just don't. I literally have like five or six whips works in progress to do. So this is, I'm not one of those people who can just like write down my works in progress and like throw them in there and just pull them out. But I have a lot of things I want to do, right? Like I want to, for example, I just saw these. I want to play around with fabric crayons, fabric dye sticks, right? I want to do this cool stitching technique on burlap or hessian fabric. I want to do some organic stitching on a piece of fabric I got from Chevis of Chevy Real Stuff Podcast. Like there are a lot of textile things that I've been sort of storing in my brain that I've been wanting to do, but haven't really organized it to do it or got distracted by something else and so didn't do it. Um, and so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of those ideas onto these cards and put them in a jar, put them in this jar. And I think I can only, I'm gonna go visit my family. So I can only do this on the days that I am home 
because I'm not taking all this rigmarole with me to travel. But I, I expect to be home at least three weeks, the first three weeks of the month. So like till the 21st, I would say. Maybe not, maybe not that late, but at least the, you know, around then the 17th, 18th, 19th, right? So we can get two and a half weeks of this. And I spend at least an hour doing the project. And in some cases, like um, playing around with pastels, I may be done with whatever I've done in an hour. Things like um, the burlap stitching might take two or three hours. And if I'm really enjoying myself, I'll just finish the project. So it'll kind of just be a little like advent experimentation. Experiment, which I mean, is actually a word, so I can't, it's not like one of those portmanteau words. Hmm. Experimentvent. <laughs> Have I just, am I going to call it Experimadvent? Because I kind of think I am. So <laughs> hashtag Experimadvent. I'll put it right here. <laughs> God, I'm so stupid. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do all these experiments, but also things that I have done before that I want to try again. Things like natural dyeing, things like I have a bunch of paper that I made that I want to stitch botanicals on. So I'm going to put those on these cards and pick them out and work on them for an hour a day and be, and then, and then make a video every day. That's the plan. We'll see if I stick to it. If I don't stick to it, if I decide that I hate it, I'll stop doing it and that's okay. But I think it'll be really fun and it'll get some of these ideas out of my brain because I have a lot of ideas cluttering up my brain. And I need to see if any of them are things that I enjoy doing because otherwise I just kind of wonder. So that is another plan. A Flossmas Experimadvent month. Like I said, I have a tiny little bit of a haul that I'm going to show you. I don't have very much because I haven't really been buying things. Oh, this is the fabric that Chevis got me or sent me. She was experimenting with tie dye. And so she sent me this and um, she was going for a sheep on a hill, but didn't quite work out. She eventually got it exactly how she wanted it. But I want to do sort of organic -y stitching on this. So that's, that's, that's one of my things I want to do. Anyway, where was I? Uh, yeah, shopping. I did a little bit of shopping, but I've been so busy and I'm like a board shopper and I have not been bored for quite a while. So, um, I'm going to show you the, like the three, four things that I got. I have, I have four things to show you. And then I want to talk about my arts festival that I did last week. And, and anything else I feel like talking about? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see where we go. So I found, like I said, I think I said at the beginning of this episode, which was a while ago, I, we have this. So kind of not this it's not a thrift store it's not a consignment shop it's new stuff but it's the leftovers from stores so i found this wreath kit it is just a brass goldie ring with felt leaves and such but i got it for the ring because i like making spool wreaths so i got a lot of these um they're like 80% off, 60% off or something like that. So I think this was a dollar 80 for this kit. So I got this ring, um, which is a heavy, heavy duty. It's more heavy duty than like Dollar Tree rings, but not as heavy duty as normal craft store rings, which is good because I need to break it in order to do the spool situation to put it, the spools on it. So this is actually perfect. I think I got 10 of them to make, you know, wreaths. To sell to make wreaths to sell at um i'm doing another uh art craft fair arts festival in mid-november and so i want wreaths for that it's a, it's a holiday market i found these bamboo are they bamboo yeah these bamboo rainbows which i thought would be really cute for weaving a real just really cute woven just kind of weave back and forth 
and just do a cute rainbow with little tassels. I think it's adorable. I got a few of these. They had these stamp kits, these bag, wine bag stamp kits, but I thought that these would be great for just embroidering on and maybe even cross stitch. That might be an even weave, might be an even weave. So I got a bunch of these and then I got two of these and I'm not sure what I'm going to use these for. I've seen some really cute kind of putting stitch, putting stitching in them, but I think I'm going to use these for spool display for my, I love vintage wind spools, as you know, and I think that these would look adorable, like having little spools in them. And it is, you know, a Christmas thing, but no one needs to know that. <laughs> and I got two of them so I can actually butt the two Christmas sides up together and you'll never see them because the other side is bare. Anywho, so those are my purchases and just kind of think, oh, and I was also thinking like, this would be really cute, a cute way to finish something. If you have a, you know, an arched piece that is rainbowy or something, that would be cute, but that's not what I'm doing. If that's not why I got it, but it would still be cute. That's what I purchased. So I did an arts festival last weekend, last Saturday. It was the Burns Bottom Arts Festival, which is a fairly regular occurrence here in our town these days. It is hosted by our local arts council and our local beer garden. It is right outside the beer garden and it's hosted by the arts council and all of the booth fees and stuff go to support the arts council. I love our arts council. They have a gallery. They do all sorts of programming for kids and adults and it's just a great organization. I'm friends with the director. It's just a great organization. I, I love it. So my booth fee went to that and I saw, um, I'll post pictures of my booth, like the things in my booth. You've seen all the stuff that I brought, weavings and spool situations, like spool decorations and trees and jewelry and stuff like that. And I also made note cards and stickers from the covers of my vintage needlework books, antique needlework books. And I had a good time. I did. It was not super well attended. I made back my booth fee, you know, four times over. So I'm not complaining, right? I at least made a uh, five times over. I mean, I, I did decent. I made money off of it and that that's good. It was very long and it was from 11 to six, but everyone packed up at 4.30 but no one told me like, it was like, I was talking to people and I turned around and like, everyone's gone, including the arts council table, <laughs> which seems a little like you sh I felt like they should have, they could have come and said something to me, but whatever. So I packed up around five 30, I think. And in the end, honestly, I did sell a Mississippi to a drunk lady at the very end. <laughs> so, so, you know, maybe it's a good thing that I stayed until a little bit later because she picked up a Mississippi. I do woven Mississippis. The The problem I had though, was that I don't think I drank, well, I know I didn't drink enough water. So I didn't drink enough water. So I was dehydrated and this, the way the sun was, it was very, um, I was moving my chair a lot to stay out of the sun. I am, I am super white. I am super pale. And so I burn quite a lot. So I didn't want to burn. Um, and I, I didn't burn, which was good. And I, yeah, I had a really good time. Um, next time I would ask uh, a friend of mine is a photographer. And so I would have want to be next to them so we could hang out. That would be super fun. And they staggered the entry time. There was a 5k run that started at 10. And so some people were able to come in at 945 and some people were told to come in at 1015. I was a 1015 person, but I needed more time. I mean, it takes me an hour and 15 minutes to set up my booth, like the tent and the tables. And cause I have so many little fiddly things to like put out. It just took a long time. So I would ask to be next to my friends and also to have more time to set up. Um, so that was a little bit stressful, but it was fun. With all that being said, I had a good time. I talked to a lot of people. So many people were like really excited about stitching. Uh, I had multiple offers of grandmother's wooden spools. So I gave out my card a lot. 
So that was fun. And yeah, I'm really, uh, I would definitely do it again. I would definitely do it again. And I'm excited about the November holiday market, which is uh, at our farmer's market. So that will be fun as well. Whew. So that's that. I think that's it. This is, uh, I was expecting this to be a bit longer of a video, but it's just, I don't know, for two weeks. It's not all that long. Oh, I do want to say those of you who are waiting for things from me. So those of you who won my um, two year floss anniversary giveaway. So Sherry and Terry and Sharla, I'm sending you a pattern and I think that's it. I have something to send to my friend Jamie, but he doesn't watch this. So I don't have to tell him that. It will get sent tomorrow. I was going to send it on Saturday and then I realized that my post office is closed on Saturday, <laughs> but it is bagged up and ready to go. So it is on its way to you on Monday, which is tomorrow. So that is uh, happening. And thank you so much for your patience. I really appreciate it. I do think after my November arts festival craft fair, I'm going to open up my spoolery Etsy shop and put everything in there so that if anybody's interested in buying my spool stuff for Christmas or whatever, it'll be, it'll be in there. That's the plan. I'll keep you posted on that. I'll keep you posted on that. That's it. I can't think of anything else. I could talk about my dog. I was going to tell you a story about my dog. I'll tell you a story about, about my dog. My dog is adorable. I'll put a video of him right here rolling in the grass because he's adorable. So I think he's going through a midlife crisis though. <laughs> I think my dog is going through a midlife crisis. We have a route. So we walk every morning, every evening. Now, unless there's a thunderstorm, we don't walk, but otherwise we walk every morning, every evening. In the morning, we walk downtown. In the evening, we walk the other direction, which is towards the campus I work on. So our route varies a lot because we wander around town wherever he wants to sniff. It's his walk, right? But the beginning of our route doesn't change. Beginning of our route is always the same. I go out of my house, I go make a left, and I go west one block, north two blocks, west. And that heads into downtown. Right, so that's downtown area. Well, and, and, we, and then we go counterclockwise. We always go counterclockwise. We've always gone counterclockwise. Six years counterclockwise. Apparently counterclockwise is not good enough for this dog anymore. So now we go, we make a left and we go left, west one block, north one block. And then he wants to go left, like west and go clockwise downtown. What? I don't know how to handle this. Like everything looks different from that direction. Like we have done thousands of walks thousands with an S of walks going like counterclockwise, going clockwise, like the muscle memory, like it almost hurts me. Like my body like doesn't understand how that happens. So I've been letting him do it every once in a while, but I don't let him do it every day. He tried to do it today, this morning. I was like, no, we're going counterclockwise. I cannot, I cannot do, I cannot because we get confused. We don't know where we're going. You know, when we're going our normal route, there are like specific places where I let him choose where he wants to go, like which direction he wants to go. When we go clockwise, it's chaos. It is chaos. <laughs> Can't handle it. I cannot handle the, the puppy chaos. Anyway, so that is my, my dog's going through a midlife crisis, which means that he's now going clockwise instead of counterclockwise on our morning walk. <laughs> If that's the, if that's the worst thing I have to worry about, then that's fantastic. But I hope that you enjoy that little story snippet into my brain at 7.15, 7.30 in the morning. I will post a, a link to my Instagram reel for my, my training montage down below if you want to check that out. And I think that that's it for me. So thank you all so much for joining me. It's been great to chat with you about my stitching and my goings on. And I will see you uh, hopefully on Tuesday for the continuation of my Embroidery 101 series that's on my to-do list is to get that filmed and edited and up in time for Tuesday or Wednesday. And then next week, uh, I will have my normal floss tube and we will 
you know, continue on. And next week we will have the first stiatch along pattern drop, which will be really exciting. I have no idea what to expect. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye. Thank you.